Welcome to another bottle skill based practice. In today's lesson, we will go over simple abbreviations that can be used to take notes during the debate round and outside of the debate round. Then we'll go over a topic that is discussed in both sides of the debate, which is restorative justice. Then we'll also watch a short video that will discuss both sides of the debate, meaning it would explain both the pro and con side for why in why out of school suspension should or shouldn't happen in secondary schools. Then after watching those two short videos and having a short discussion, we will then go back into the evidence and apply what we've read to the videos we've watched. So I hope you are ready and let's get right into our lesson. Understanding the vocabulary that is used in your debate round is very important. And abbreviations are important because when you are flowing your partner or your opponent's speech during the round, you want to make sure that you can get all the words that they're saying as fast as possible. So here are some that I've come up with and some that I believe will help you during the debate round. So if we start off with restorative justice, as you can see, we can just say RJ as a simple abbreviation. Following with suspensions, we can say SUP. Expulsion, we can say XP, EXPLFN. So you can see we're just taking out mainly the vowels when it comes down to abbreviations or if we can just take the first letter of each main word, we can come up with the abbreviation. So you can go ahead and read the rest on your own. And if you have any other suggestions, go ahead and put them in the suggestion bar or put them in the chat and I'll go ahead and put them on the Google Doc so that we can all read them. That goes for regular abbreviations are just abbreviations that we can say we thought of that are maybe not on the vocabulary list or words that are commonly used in the debate round such as to or because, maybe impact, uh, link, out of school suspension, or public forum. Because obviously we're using public forum, but sometimes we don't know all the abbreviations, so it's good to have that in our tool belt. So please make sure you are using your pack to its entirety. I will also make sure that I share this in our Google Doc so that you all can have a copy of it, but you already have access to this. And I say further explore the packet and find more abbreviations. If you find words that you can abbreviate, go ahead and do so. More than half of victims of violent crime don't even call the police in the first place. They prefer nothing to everything we have to offer. The vast majority of crime survivors' pain goes unhealed. What the existence of restorative justice means is that we can no longer pretend we don't know what else to do. As a country, we're really good at punishment. It's passive. It doesn't require people to act, to think. It certainly doesn't require them to change. When we lock people up, we excuse them from their responsibility to answer for what they've done. Restorative justice is a process to hold them accountable. It's a tool. People take turns answering questions like, what happened? What needs arise? Whose responsibility is it to meet those needs? And how is that person going to do it? It requires someone to take responsibility, to repair things as much as possible, and to never commit that harm again. 
Apologies isn't about feeling sorry. It's about doing sorry. Things like go to school, get a job, pay restitution, apologize, do community service. Restorative justice practices have been used to address low-level infractions like vandalism, up to addressing the impact of murders on the surviving family members. Restorative justice processes are first and foremost about meeting the needs of people who are hurt. Sometimes the person who can make the greatest contribution to a survivor's healing is the person who harmed them. To come through trauma, we need answers to our questions. To say, my life was never the same after you hurt me like that. Crime survivors want the most safety possibly available. So if incarceration actually produced safety, we would have the safest country in human history. That's not what we have. The core drivers of violence are shame, isolation, and inability to meet one's economic needs, and exposure to violence. And we bake those into prisons to try and keep people from committing further violence. Incarceration exposes people to exactly the things that increase the likelihood that they'll go on to harm others. People who are hurt deserve a process that will help them heal. People who are responsible for crime have an obligation to be accountable for that. All of us deserve responses to crime that actually make us safer. Our current criminal justice system doesn't deliver any of those, and restorative justice at its best delivers them all. Is that a good thing? Was that a bad thing? I want, I want to help you guys build a very good understanding on like what they're talking about because I know that a lot of you guys, everyone, I'm not going to say a lot, everyone has not been suspended or anything of that sort, but you know. Oh, no worries. No worries, y'all. It's okay. So, yeah. Um, let's talk about that. So, um, when when you look at um, it's really because our if you look at schools that are mostly in like you know lower income or um, what they call metropolitan areas. Yes, you will. If everybody have a hard stop for like five, Zane, how are you to to the end? Oh, I guess Yazin. Oh, Yazin, how are you? How are you feeling? I haven't heard anything from you in the chat. Okay. Well, yeah. So I guess we can hard stop at five since it seems like everyone is kind of, you know, kind of winding down. I want to make sure you all get to your homework as well. So we're going to watch another video that talks about um, if, if in or out of school suspension should be banned. Um, like I said, giving you more of a view on what the topic is talking about and why it's important. Um, and then hopefully you guys will have a little bit more to talk about or maybe you can have a note to bring up for next time so here goes another video so that we can discuss it and it's another short video We're all familiar with school suspensions, right? The idea is that if you get in enough trouble as punishment, you get sent home for a little while. When you eventually return, the hope is that you learned a valuable lesson and don't cause any more problems. Now, that always seemed crazy to me. You do something bad, and as punishment, you don't have We're all familiar with school suspensions. 
The idea is that if you get in enough trouble as punishment, you get sent home for a little while when you eventually return. We're all familiar with school suspensions, right? The idea is that if you get in enough trouble as punishment, you get sent home for a little while. When you eventually return, the hope is that you learned a valuable lesson and don't cause any more problems. Now, that always seemed crazy to me. You do something bad and as punishment, you don't have to go to school? Shouldn't that be a reward? I mean, who doesn't want to sit around watching Netflix all day? But suspensions have some unintended consequences. Turns out, students who get suspended perform worse in school and are less likely to graduate. And according to a 2018 government report, schools have a discrimination problem when it comes to discipline. Black students get disciplined more harshly and more often than their white classmates for the same kind of misbehavior. You heard that right. A black kid could push another student or cuss at their teacher and get suspended, while a white kid could do the exact same thing and remain in school. Obviously, that's not cool. So over the last few years, more than half of US states have passed laws to reduce suspensions. Now that's all well and good, but what happens if some real dangerous stuff goes down, like someone brings a weapon to school? That's why some people think suspensions are a necessary tool. It may not be great for the suspended student, but they say it's more important to keep everyone else at the school safe. So, should suspensions be suspended? If you've been paying attention to the news recently, suspensions are no bueno. And with good reason. Students who get suspended are more likely to repeat a grade, drop out of school, and become involved in the criminal justice system, aka the school to prison pipeline. And if you're unfamiliar with the term, the concept is pretty simple. Students who get suspended are more likely to drop out. And students who drop out are three times more likely to get arrested. So suspensions lead directly to more people in the US prison system. And as we mentioned at the top of this video, suspensions aren't handed out equally or fairly. Students with disabilities are suspended at nearly twice the rate of students without disabilities. Black girls are suspended at six times the rate of white girls. Not a good look. Some people say that if you act up, you need to face the consequences. But a lot of behavior that results in school discipline exists in a gray area where our own subconscious stereotypes can influence our decision making. Sure, there's the stuff that's clearly suspendable, like bringing a gun to school. But sometimes it's because of what researchers call challenging behavior, like talking back to a teacher. And in those situations, research shows that students of color can get disciplined while their white classmates don't. Again, not a good look. So what are schools supposed to do? How do you balance school safety with the bad effects suspensions has on the individual students? One option is to replace out-of-school suspensions with in-school suspensions. Instead of getting sent home, a suspended student comes to school but is separated from other students. In theory, the benefit of this approach is that they can continue to learn at school where they're typically provided with a quiet, safe space to do their schoolwork, and their days are structured, and they may even get counseling. But critics say in-school suspensions are nothing more than a holding tank for disruptive students. In fact, some research shows that holding students in isolation may be just as harmful as sending them home. And in-school suspensions require additional staff, which some schools can't afford. Another option is restorative justice, where instead of punishment, the focus is on rehabilitation. If a fight breaks out between two students, instead of separating them and suspending them both, restorative justice focuses on bringing them together to talk out their issues in a respectful, safe manner. They're encouraged to accept responsibility for the harm they caused, while also reflecting on why they acted out. The hope is that the whole process will eventually create a safer, healthier school environment. It reminds me of being in middle school, we had something called Peace Patrol. And when you were on Peace Patrol, you got a blue jacket and a clipboard, and you got to patrol the recess yard when kids were out there playing. I mean, I guess it worked. Nobody got suspended on my watch. So, who knows? Research from a Colorado school district found that when schools used restorative justice to deal with problems, suspension rates did indeed drop. However, black students still received disproportionately more suspensions than white students. It's not clear exactly why that is, but restorative justice is difficult to get right. It's also expensive, requiring special training for staff. A third option is to keep it local. With this approach, each school decides what works best for its students. Out-of-school suspensions might be included, or they might not. Every school is unique, and the benefit of this approach is that it allows staff and teachers more flexibility to completely remove disruptive students. That's why when lawmakers in California tried to pass a bill in 2018 outlawing suspensions in middle schools, the governor vetoed it, saying the state shouldn't be too heavily involved in how local schools discipline students, because it's the teachers and principals who are in the classrooms every day, so they should be making the decisions. But a primary drawback of the local approach is what we talked about earlier. More out-of-school suspensions could feed the school-to-prison pipeline and disproportionately target certain minority students and kids with disabilities. 
and schools that suspend students aren't necessarily any safer than those that don't hand out suspensions. One study based on a survey of students in over 700 middle and high schools in New York City found that in general, schools with a higher suspension rate were perceived as less safe, while schools with no suspensions or a lower suspension rate were perceived as more safe. So what do you think? Should schools suspend suspensions? What will work best in your school and why? Let us know in the comments below. And hey, if you're a middle or high school teacher, you can get your students talking about this topic on KQED Learn. Check it out right here. And if you're a student, you can teach your teacher something by showing them this video on KQED Learn as well. Bonus points for you for sure. Let's go on to the con. So going into our con side and like the past, you know, couple of minutes that we've been um that we've been looking at these videos they've been going over exactly what the con is needed for their speeches which is understanding why restorative justice is good so on the con case pro and con. um it's better it's best to have an understanding of both arguments so with um both sides uh what i said last week is when you pick your partner you want to figure out which one of you are going to be the first or the second speaker on the pro and con side that way you are only preparing for one side of the debate meaning if you are the first or second pro you're preparing for your speech you're not preparing for both sides does that make sense okay Okay, so yeah, but going back into um, the con evidence, um, you always want to start off your con speech. So when you're the first con speaker, you also want to start off with what your stance is and what you're going to be arguing about. So that's what that first sentence says. The con side of the debate argues the uh, argue that primary and secondary school in the United States uh, states should not allow out of school suspension in order to provide this uh, provide in order to pr prove this. We provide the following contentions. So contention one, right? Um, suspensions lead uh, to children spending less time in their classes and fewer days. Uh, children are present at school, the like $35 billion a year. Suspensions uh, connected with a higher likelihood of getting in trouble with the justice system. One study on, I mean, out of Texas showed that 32% of the students who were who were ever suspended ended up in contact with a juvenile uh, probation officer compared to the other 2% of the students who weren't suspended. In Oklahoma's actions that can uh, actions that can lead to suspension include serious offenses like bullying, physical assault, of a facility member or possession of alcohol, weapons or stolen properties. But students can also get suspended for violating of a school regulation. In, that, in the case of out of school suspensions, school districts can determine whether or not they want to provide an educational uh, education plan to students suspended for five days fewer or fewer. This means that a child can miss a full week of school without the school having to support their education. So uh, let's say contention one, this sounds like this will be education. And the claim. So when you are looking for your claim, it is um, usually going to be either the first or last sentence because it kind of gives a summary of what the paragraph is talking about. And the first uh, sentence kind of, um, kind of gives us a clue into what, oops, into what the, the card is talking about. So 
suspensions. Suspensions, suspensions, uh, leads to children. Uh, suspensions led to children spending less time in the classroom. Without any support from their school. Suspension lead to children spending less time in the classroom without any support from their, oh, let's write from, from their schools. So that gives a little bit of a summary of what the card will be talking about. Um, it's gonna be talking about uh, children spending less time in the classroom. And it will also talk about uh, the schools not being supportive of what they have going on. Sounds good. All right. So after you write your um, your claim, because like I said, that's just a uh, a little like one, you don't wanna make it too long. So it's gonna be like a one to two sentence summary of the card, right? Then you're gonna do an impact. So um, what was the most impactful thing that you read? Oh, I'm sorry, before you do all that, then you wanna go through an underline. So you can underline like things that are very important. So for example, I will underline this that suspension led less time in school and fewer days a child is present in school, the less education they receive. Uh, boom, I will underline that part. Yeah, so um, you go through and you can underline Boom, underline. If you wanna highlight, you can also highlight. Let's see, I'm gonna underline, highlight, bam. Um, to suspiciously to in a few days, present. Um, obviously that directly links to less education. Um, boom, then anything that has to do with money. So I saw money right here. So I'm going to make sure I underline that. So it says that, yeah, and then increase dropout rates. Um, so underline, and then increase dropout rates. Boom. Cost of country. Oh. Okay. I'm back. Okay. Okay, back to where I was. Because that was rude. Okay. We're back on con. Hopefully, it did not erase anything I just did. No. Okay, so um, we're gonna say that, yeah, increased dropout rates caused by unnecessary suspension cost the country uh, $35 billion a year. So we could underline that part, but as far as highlighting, I just wanna highlight that increasing dropout rates, boom, highlight that part. 
uh, and then you could say it, it cost the count the country $35 billion a year. So that was the important information that was in that sentence. Also, we are going back down to a percentage. Bam, we're gonna underline it all the way to the period, underline. Then we go back and we highlight. So we have suspension leads, uh, suspension led, to uh, children spending less time in their in their classes and and the fewer days children are are present at school the less education they receive increasing dropout rates uh so increasing dropout rates uh caused by unnecessary suspension is costing the country $35 billion a year. Um, then you could go down and it says one study show, uh, one study out of Texas shows that 32% of students who were ever suspended ended up in contact with a juvenile probational officer compared to the 2% of students who weren't suspended. So you wanna go for the percentage, 30, I mean, I'm sorry, 23% of students who were suspended. Okay. So suspended, bam, highlight, um, suspended. Um, Yeah, you ended up in contact with a juvenile probational officer. Man, you say, uh, so, okay, Ooh. make sure that it's highlighted and then you can say, I'm sorry, I'm just adding a note for it, like, say, do. Sorry, do. Okay. Okay, evils. All right. Um just wanted to make sure that there was another abbreviation there. Okay. Um, there, here we go, 2% of students who weren't suspended. Um, I, I'm not sure. I haven't heard from him. How are you feeling now? Are you? Zane, how are you feeling about what we went over so far? Is it I mean, I heard that you said your uh, sister helped you with cutting cards. So is this kind of familiar? Is this an easy task for you?
Okay, cool. So um, I want you to uh, finish cutting the last two cards for the con side. I know um, you don't have it in your physical, um, like in the physical, but I will make sure that I drop it off to you by tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't, I want to <laughs> keep on trying to have you guys do Sparta Bates. Maybe I should do that in the top of the hour so that I can catch everyone before they leave. But please also make sure that if you haven't already um, filled out the Google sheet that allows you to say if this time for practice works for you or not, so that we can try and get some more participation. And uh, you're already registered, so you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, make sure you're cutting those last two cards on the con side. And I will see you next week. Don't forget that next week we're going to be learning how to cut cards. So maybe uh, we can have you work with Miss BK and then you guys can collab. So yeah. Well, thank you for joining in on practice today. Really enjoyed it. Sorry for being a little tardy, but we got some good information, some good background information on uh, the School of Prison Pipeline. So I will see you guys next week week. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, y'all.